Oh hi, thanks for watching my video. I recently started playing The Sims 2 again in my spare time, and just like every time I play The Sims 2, I notice more and more tiny details that really highlight how much love was put into that game. So, today I'm going to talk about 10 things I noticed in The Sims 2 that don't happen in The Sims 4. The purpose of this video isn't just to moan about The Sims 4. I mean, okay, maybe a tiny bit, but it's mainly just to appreciate the small things and really just highlight some features that I'd love to see return one day, hopefully in The Sims 5. So let's start with cooking. Cooking in The Sims 2 is a bit more of a process. When you ask a Sim to make a meal or a snack, they'll take the ingredients out of the fridge and they'll start putting together that meal. Sometimes they'll even reach into the drawers and cupboards to get out pots and pans. For example, I had my Sims 2 Sim make themselves a sandwich. Then I had my Sim in The Sims 4 make themselves a sandwich and they literally just took one out of the fridge. Two very different experiences. There are some meals in The Sims 4 where it does look a bit like The Sims 2 where they'll pull out a chopping board with the ingredients, but it's just not as detailed. For example, to make mac and cheese, my Sim simply opened the fridge door, pulled out a chopping board with the ingredients and poured it straight into the saucepan on the stove and started mixing it together. It's a one step process. In The Sims 2, however, they pull out the tray, they put it all in the bowl, they use the drawers and the cupboards to pull out the spoon they need to mix it up, pour it into the saucepan, and then they go and cook it on the stove. So even for the same meal, there are a lot more steps involved in The Sims 2. There's just more detail and more animation, and there are some meals in The Sims 4 that require more than just one step of pouring food directly into the saucepan. But even then, they tend to just look the same. A sim pulls out a chopping board that has some vegetables on it, they chop them up and then they magically appear in this bowl and they just mix it together, put it in the oven. Having watched this sim chop up some vegetables and then pour it into a pancake mix looking thing in the bowl, I bet you still don't know what she's cooking, do you? A lot of the meals look the same. Photo poses. This is kind of a small one, but in The Sims 2, you could just click on your sim and get them to pose, and then click on another sim and just get them to take a picture. And when you move your camera around, your sims will follow you. So whichever way you turn the camera, the sims will always be looking at you, and you can frame your sim in the picture, take the snap, and then add it to their family album. I used to use it all the time with the Bon Voyage pack for family photos. And then we have The Sims 4, which is a newer game, so obviously higher definition, better quality photos. However, the taking photos system is so glitchy that sometimes your sims won't even take a picture because they won't register that they're standing in front of a sim, or someone will just stand in front of the camera and you can't actually take a picture. And when you are able to take a successful picture of a sim, you can't actually choose their pose, you can just get them to swap around whatever pose they're gonna do from a list of randomly generated poses. Granted, The Sims 2 poses are chosen from a list of existing ones, but at least I get to choose what my sim is actually doing when I take a picture of them. And in The Sims 4, you can customise pictures, but that's only with the use of mods and custom content, so there's not really much point mentioning it because Andrew Pose Player doesn't come with the game. Cinematic cutaways. You used to get little movies with your sims in them, highlighting the key moments in their life, like going to university, having a baby, there were all sorts of things included. One of my favourite cutaways being Woohoo, something that actually gave you some entertainment while your sims were bumping uglies. Of course, cutaways were taken away in The Sims 3 and The Sims 4, plus The Sims 4 didn't have memories, so there wasn't really much to celebrate the big milestones in life. No memory, no cutaway. Quite a nice follow-on from Woohoo would probably be cuddling in bed. In The Sims 2, when Sims have finished bumping uglies, one of them will move their pillow closer to the other and scooch up close, and they'll sleep while spooning, which is just adorable. Not only will they spend the night sleeping whilst cuddling each other, but they'll also do a few cute little interactions when they wake up. Doing things like stroking their hair or kissing them on the forehead. A feature that is not included in The Sims 4. Sims just sleep next to each other, not even so much as a spoon. Very cold if you ask me. Then we have playing chess. 
It's such a simple thing, but the small things really do make a difference. So in The Sims 2, when Sims decide that they're going to play chess, they pull out all the chess pieces, that actually look like the chess pieces by the way, and when they place a chess piece like a pawn, that piece will actually stay in its place until that sim moves it or another sim takes it away. They actually do play chess and use the pieces properly. It's really weird, it's kind of like watching a mini game within a game. Then there's The Sims 4, which just doesn't work like that. Chess is used to build the logic skill, but there really isn't any point in watching them play chess because their moves don't actually make any difference. The pieces don't go where they move them. Sometimes the pieces will just jumble around randomly after enough moves have been made, but it definitely doesn't have the same level of detail as The Sims 2. Burglars and the Police The Sims 4 in general is more of a happiness simulator than a life simulator. The reality is, sometimes bad things happen in life, and The Sims 2 was definitely more difficult and posed more problems than The Sims 4 does in terms of having unfortunate things happen to your Sims. There was a real incentive to invest in getting a burglar alarm because, as you just witnessed in The Sims 2, at any time a burglar can strike and start stealing your shit. At that point, you have to get to the phone quickly and call the police, who will come over pretty much as soon as you get off the phone. Sometimes they catch the bad guys, sometimes they don't. There isn't really a lot for me to compare to with The Sims 4 with this one because unlike the older games, The Sims 4 doesn't have burglars and it doesn't have the police. So, there you go. Travelling around, and by that I mean cars. Sims in The Sims 2 didn't have to use cars, but they could. And why wouldn't you use them? They were given so much love. Not only on the outside, but you could actually go inside the cars and look at the amount of detail there. You could see your Sims in there, holding their little steering wheels, and you didn't just have to use your car to travelling around, you could just sit in your car or listen to the radio or even woohoo in the car. The animations for them were pretty detailed, so you could watch your Sims car drive off the driveway, you could watch them pull up in front of a community lot, and also cars would behave differently depending on what kind of level they are. So for example, my Caliente sisters have a sports car, so they had a pretty smooth ride. If your sim drove a beaten up old banger though, the way it would drive would be pretty jerky and they'd have to slam the door shut twice because it didn't close properly, because it's a shitty old car. Detail. Sims in The Sims 4 didn't really, uh, travel, I guess. They just used their phones instead of any mode of transportation, then you'd be met with a loading screen to pick where you want to go, another loading screen, and then your sim would just teleport there. So there wasn't really any kind of travel involved. Then we have shopping, one of my favourite things to do in The Sims 2. So, in The Sims 2, when it comes to clothes anyway, you could choose your Sims outfits in Create a Sim, but after that, if your Sim wanted any other outfits, they would have to go to a clothes shop. You couldn't just give them anything they wanted. So, they would go over to the clothes store, browse a few pieces, and then you could choose something for them to try on or buy. If they're trying something on, they'll go into a dressing room, and then they'll come out and look at themselves wearing their garment in the mirror, if you decide that it's something worth buying, then they'll go up to the cash register and make a purchase, adding it to their wardrobe. Clothes shopping in The Sims 4 is a different story. First off, Sims have access to all clothes anyway, so there's no real need to send them shopping, but there is a clothes store that comes with Get to Work. But even if you send them there, their way of trying on clothes is to just do a little spin around and then, hey presto, they're wearing the clothes. If they want to buy them, then they just do a very short animation and then it's done. There's no real process to it, they don't need to go to a cash register, they don't need to talk to any employees. The whole experience is pretty pointless actually. And in The Sims 2, shopping isn't just limited to clothes. Sims fridges will run out of food the more that they eat, meaning that Sims will have to go to the grocery store to go and replenish stocks. And when they buy their grocery, it has the same interaction of going through the motions of paying for their goods at the cash register. Hanging out. 
This is a really small one, but it's another one of those small details that for me makes a big difference. Sims in The Sims 2 could use the hangout interaction, which is where they all just sit in a circle and they just chat. You can see what they're talking about. They all sit in different ways. Some Sims sit cross-legged, others sit with one leg up. They just look proper relaxed. And for some reason, Sims in The Sims 4 just can't do this. It's mainly just the ability to sit on the ground that I, I don't understand. Why can't Sims in The Sims 4 just sit on the floor? Even kids don't sit on the floor in The Sims 4. There was a lot of rhyming words there, but I just don't get it. It just seems like such a simple thing that Sims should be able to do. You can't even have a picnic sitting down on the grass, you have to use a picnic bench. Yeah, I appreciate it's a little thing, just a bit annoying. And finally, another petty one. Just lounging on the couch, especially to watch TV. Look how relaxed she looks, that's how I lay on the sofa when I'm watching TV. For some reason though, in The Sims 4, Sims just sit upright at all times. Even if it's a lazy day, even if they went out drinking the night before, they still just sit upright when they watch TV. And like I said, I know it's only a small thing, but it's usually just the smallest things in a game that really give away whether it was something that was genuinely made with love or whether it wasn't. And uh, I guess I'll let that speak for itself. <laughs> So, there are 10 things you can do in The Sims 2 that don't happen in The Sims 4. Did you notice these things? I'd love to know in the comments. But for now, that's it from me. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe, you know I love it when you do that. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye